Hello and welcome to another video from DMS. David here again from the technical team. Uh, this week we'll be looking at the J48 range of gas regulators. Uh, I'll be giving you a bit of a technical insight into their operation and availability and we'll also get a little bit hands-on later in the video, uh, perhaps uh, just having a look inside one of them uh, changing a spring. If you've got any questions or queries, please give us a call as for the contact details on the screen now. Uh, or likewise, if you want to leave us a comment in the box below. And as always, keep subscribed for future videos and for any other information on our product ranges. Uh, the J48 pressure regulators cover low pressure applications. Uh, the maximum inlet pressure that these can actually tolerate is 350 millibar. Uh, useful in controlling the level of gas down to a safe level of pressure. Uh, the UK standard is normally around 21 millibar, but obviously given the range of springs that these can accommodate, we can also utilise other outlet pressures from the regulators. Uh, the way these work is they have an internal diaphragm in the actual unit, and as the gas passes through on the inlet side, uh, a spring inside obviously causes resistance on the diaphragm, and the, the operating pressure of the gas is reduced down to an amount as per set by uh, a technician or engineer. Um, these have very high levels of control and very quick activation. Uh, this is mainly due to the internal impulse that they actually utilise. So as the gas comes in, the sensors are working already and actually activating the controls of the internal diaphragm so that the pressure comes out the other side at the desired pressure. Uh, covering mostly industrial applications, however these are also used in sort of large domestic schemes, perhaps on the, uh, the main incoming line. Um, the sizes that these regulators cover, uh, I've got an example of the smallest one here, this is the 3 quarter inch gas, uh, J48 gas regulator. Uh, it's got an uh, internal screwed threaded connection, uh, again just 3 quarter inch. Uh, this is the same for the next one, which is the 1 inch, uh, then you've also got the inch and a quarter, uh, inch and a half, and the example on my left here is actually a 2 inch uh, J48 gas regulator. Uh, we can also supply a threaded screwed connection for 2.5 inch and 3 inch regulators. Uh, similarly, you can also get for sort of larger applications, we can do a 65mm flange model, and again, we can do an 80mm flange, 100mm, uh, and 150mm flange model, all of them encompassing PN16 flanges as standard. Uh, in terms of the outlet pressure control that these regulators can give, uh, the smaller ones, up to 2.5 inch, they can supply outlet pressures from 5 millibar. And using an assortment of different springs for different ranges, we can go all the way up to 160 millibar. Slightly different for the 80 mil regulators and above, uh, thanks to the larger sort of body castings, these can again go from 5 millibar outlet pressure control, uh, but using high pressure conversion add ons, they can go all the way up to 345 millibar outlet pressure. Okay, now we'll just go through a very quick guide into changing the spring inside one of the J48 regulators. Um, again, I'm just using the small 3 quarter inch sample that we had before. Uh, it's the easiest to handle because of its small size. Um, basically, yours will be, might already be installed in the pipework. You might just be looking to change the spring out for a different pressure setting. Uh, so it could be in the, ver in the horizontal, sorry. Uh, again, these can be installed in the vertical um, in any direction. Obviously, that doesn't really make a difference. But again, in terms of horizontal installation, these are fine for any different orientation, left or right, uh, of the actual pipe axis. Uh, the first step, very simply, is to take off this top cap, uh, it just comes off very easily. Uh, lines up with this small hole in the actual lid uh, with this plastic part here. Let's pop that to one side. Uh, now the next step is to remove this plastic unit from the metal. Uh, the way this works is it's looped around this catch here. So all we do is we lever it out like so, just get the screwdriver underneath and it will release. Just with a bit of movement back. So it's spin it around this way. Pick it up. And there we go, very simple. And once we've moved it to this position, uh, the loop is then big enough to get over this uh, nut in the middle. And uh, we'll just put that to one side again. So now we're, we're left with this arrangement and we've got to get inside the actual regulator to the spring. The way this works is this hexagonal top, uh, sorry it's actually an octagon, uh, this is actually screwable so we can twist it. So if we twist it anti-clockwise as we face it, uh, as far as we can, it then loosens up uh, in inside, give it a lift and it will come apart like so. Um, as you might be able to see, what I'll do is I'll take the spring out of the way, we'll cover that in a moment. Um, there's this plastic unit underneath the actual lid. Uh, this lines up with the niche niches in the actual unit. So as you can see there, you've got a large one and a small one, you've got a large hole and a small hole. Um, on the actual lid, the metal component, again, you've got similar niches 
in the lid, uh, which actually catch as you twist it, what keeps it uh, tied down so it doesn't come open unnecessarily. Just again, pop that to one side. So this is the spring we took out of the regulator. As you can see, for practice, I'm just using exactly the same model just to sort of as demonstrative purposes. Um, the, the, ideally, the best way to change these is as the regulator sits flat, so that gravity is on your side, um, it's not gonna move about at all. But obviously, as per sort of standard service, these, this can be done uh, vertically installed. Um, you just gotta be a bit careful in making sure the spring is flush with the diaphragm. Um, there's no set uh, routine, it's just in the actual top, you can see there's like a small ring. Uh, the, the spring just sits around that part um, and sits comfortably. So again, we'll just put in another spring uh, like it was brand new and that lines up on the bottom. Uh, the top section then comes in like so. Fits down. Push it all the way in so that the metal is flush next to each other and then rotate it clockwise and it, hey presto it sits. Now we're not quite finished yet because if you look here, um, we've got a niche here and a hole here. Now these need to just line up uh, that way that will allow us to put the plastic back on this component uh, very simply almost identical to how we took it off you put the, the widest part of the loop over the screw and then if you push it through it will hold itself in place very simple and uh, get the lid pop it back on the top hey presto there's a spring change nice and simple uh, all J48 regulators have this label on the front uh, might be worth changing that obviously as per component changes. Uh, again, we could help with any layout of the actual labels at all. Right, that concludes that part of the video. Uh, as always, if you've got any questions or queries, please direct your attention to the contact details on the screen now. Uh, please feel free to leave us any comments in the box below and keep subscribed for future videos on our product ranges. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again next time. Goodbye.